Hi, do you know how to balance a redox reaction like the following in an acidic medium? No? No worries, join my class. Hi ladies and gentlemen, today we have one objective only. We are going to learn how to balance redox reactions in an acidic medium. Please don't forget to answer the questions at the end of the video and put your answers in the comment section below. And if you have any question that you couldn't solve, please share it with me in the comment section. And thank you. These are the steps that we are going to follow while we are trying to balance redox reactions in an acidic medium. I will keep them displayed on the screen while I'm practicing them one by one. The first step in balancing redox reactions in an acidic medium is by removing the spectator ions. For you to understand how to remove the spectator ions, look at the following example. Imagine that we have the following reaction between copper and silver nitrate to produce copper nitrate and silver. If I want to write the net ionic equation, first I have to split the aqueous solutions, like here silver nitrate should be split into silver and nitrate. On the other side, copper nitrate should be split into copper and nitrate. As you can see, the nitrate ion is common in the reactants and the products. So we call the nitrate ion as a spectator ion and can be cancelled when we have to write the net ionic equation. For the second step, which is how to assign the oxidation number, I'm going to keep a link in the description for a video teaching you how to assign the oxidation number of all the atoms in a reaction. It's very important for you to watch that video to assign the oxidation number of all the atoms in a reaction. Like here, the oxidation number of copper atom is zero, for silver ion it's plus one, for copper ion it's plus two, and for silver atom it's zero. Let's have our first example. In the following reaction, as you can see, we don't have a common structure in the reactants and the products, so we don't have a spectator ion to be removed. We start with assigning the oxidation number. As I told you, I will keep a link in the description for a video showing you how to assign the oxidation number for different atoms. Oxidation number for chlorine ion is minus one. Oxidation number for oxygen is minus two. We do the math. We find that oxidation for chromium is plus six. On the other side, chlorine, it's a free element, so it's zero. Chromium ion is plus three. As you noticed here, the oxidation number for chlorine increased, so it's oxidized, while the oxidation number of chromium decreased, so it is reduced. After recognizing elements that are reduced and elements that are oxidized, it's going to be easy for us to write the half reactions to continue the steps and balancing redox reactions. We have to write it like you see, chloride ions, they are converted to chlorine and chromium oxide is changing to chromium ions. And now let's go to the third step, which is how to balance atoms other than oxygen and hydrogen. If we look at the first half reaction, we can see that we have two atoms of chlorine to the right and we have one to the left. So we have to multiply the left side by two. In the second half reaction, we can see that we have two chromium atoms to the left and we have one chromium atom to the right. So we have to multiply the right side by two. So now after atoms other than oxygen and hydrogen are balanced, we go to the fourth step, which is how to balance oxygen atoms. In the first half reaction, we don't have oxygen atoms. In the second, we can see that we have seven oxygen atoms to the left. So I have to add seven water molecules to the right. So I balance the oxygen atoms by adding water molecules. Step five, which is how to balance hydrogen atoms. I want to please listen carefully for this step since it's the step that most of the students do mistakes in it. To balance hydrogen atoms, I should add hydronium ions on the other side. Like here, in the first half reaction, we don't have hydrogen. In the second, we have 14 hydrogens to the right side. So I should add 14 hydronium ions on the left side. But if I add 14 hydronium ions, then I added more oxygen atoms. To balance that one, I should add the same number 
of hydronium ions I added to the water molecules on the other side. So here I added 14 hydronium. The same number should be added to the water molecules. So I have 7 plus 14, 21 water molecules on the right side. Step 6, how to balance the overall charge. It's an easy step. If we look at the first half reaction, we can see that we have two negative on the left side. We have zero to the right. So I should add two electrons to the right side. Then the two sides, they have the same charge. And the second half reaction, we can see that we have negative two plus 14 on the left side. On the second side, we have two times three plus, so six plus. To make them balanced, I should add six electrons to the left side. So now both sides, they will have the same charge. So to balance the charge, you need to add electrons. You have to figure it out where is the best place to add those electrons to make both sides they have the same charge. The next step is to balance the electrons. You have to make sure that the electrons in both half reactions are equal to each other. And the first we have two and the second we have six. To make them the same, we should multiply the first half reaction by three. If we multiply it by three, then we have six electrons on both sides. And now the electrons gained is going to be equal to the electrons lost. And now we are ready for the final step. We have to combine the half reactions that we did. We put all the reactants together and all the products together. And then we check if we have anything in common. We have to cancel that one. And then we are ready to verify our redox reaction if everything is correct or not. So now, as you can see, we didn't have anything in common in the reactants and the product except the six electrons. So we have to cancel them. And then we write the final redox reaction. We verify by counting how many chlorine atoms we have to the left and to the right. We can see that we have six on both sides. We count the chromium. We have two on both sides. We have oxygen atoms. We count them. We find that we have 21 oxygen atoms to the left and also we have 21 oxygen to the right. We count the hydrogen atoms. We can see that we have 42 hydrogen atoms to the left and 42 hydrogen atoms to the right. Finally, we check the charge. As you can see, to the left side, we have six negative and two negative, so eight negative with 14 plus, 14 positive. So on the left side, we have six plus, on the right side, we have only two times three plus, so we have six plus. So both sides, they have the same charge, same number of atoms. So now the redox reaction is totally balanced. I will not add more examples for me not to make the video too long, but I will add more videos in the future showing you how to balance redox reactions in acidic medium and also in alkaline or basic medium. Just give me few more seconds for me to repeat what we have learned in this video and then you are going to be ready to start solving the questions at the end of the video. So to balance redox reactions in an acidic medium you have to follow these steps in order. You have to split the reaction into half reactions then balance other atoms then balance oxygen by adding water balance hydrogen by adding hydronium then add electrons to balance the charge, make the electrons equal, and then combine the two half reactions and verify that everything is balanced. Now it's your turn to answer. Pause the video, copy the questions, answer them, put your answer in the comment section below. Thank you.